probate estate is open and you are a creditor or are the personal representative and have to deal with a creditor. Hi, I'm Darren Finling from the Probate Pro, and we're going to spend this session discussing creditors within Michigan probate statute. Specifically, we're looking at the highlighted areas here on this general timeline. Creditors are individuals or entities that the estate may owe money to. So they are a liability of the probate estate, not an asset, but rather an expense or liability upon which the estate may owe. Those creditors are entitled to notice in two primary ways. One is notice to any known creditors. These are creditors that would have to be reasonably uh, identified by a personal representative by reviewing the mail or just their general knowledge of the deaths of the person that died. They are entitled to a specific form called a notice to known creditors. Also, creditors that you may not be aware of are entitled to notice through publication. This is done through a legal notice in the uh, legal news or in a general circulation newspaper within that area to provide notice to any creditors that are unknown, creditors that you may not be aware of. Those could include visa or credit card bills, medical bills, or even the, the neighbor down the street. Now, as a personal representative, if you perform both of these functions correctly, giving notice to known creditors as well as publishing, you absolve yourself of liability if you then distribute the estate and those creditors have failed to come forward. So adherence to this, uh, these responsibilities is really critical to your role in serving as personal representative. And on the counter side, if you are a creditor, you have to make sure that you follow the requisite steps to be assured that you have properly perfected your creditor claim. So let's unpack this and discuss the various processes within the areas that I've just identified. First is the publication notice. This is done at the uh, beginning of a probate estate after a letter of authority is issued, you publish in the legal news, as we said, for any unknown creditors. This publication goes into that um, legal notice. And really, um, this is a publication that most people don't read, but people who are creditors do read these publication notices and look to see if there is a match between an estate that has been opened up and is publishing and a debt that may be owed to their company. So it's very, it's a kind of an archaic way of giving notice, uh, but it is statutorily required that you publish for any of the unknown creditors to give them due process and a right to be able to be able to file a claim. The next document is the creditor form that begins this process of identifying when somebody claims to be a creditor of the estate, they complete the SCAO form, the State Court Administrator form, Statement and Proof of Claim. In that form, you identify that you are submitting a claim against the estate. You identify the estate name and of course the creditor, which is the party upon which claims is owed money and their address. And then a description of the claim, a description of what is owed. Is it a funeral and burial expense? Is it a credit card? Is it a loan? Uh, as much description as, as possible to give the personal representative an understanding of what the debt is that you are asserting. And of course, any amount that's owed so they can decide whether the personal representative can decide whether they're going to allow the creditor claim or disallow the creditor claim. Now, this, the filing of this form is time barred, so you have to do it within a certain requisite time under Michigan's probate statute, which is with either within notice of known creditors being provided to you or within the publication period, or if they overlap within 30 days of the publication. So for further clarification on the timeline upon which you must file a creditor claim, please carefully review Michigan's statute and court rule. The next step is a signature of the claimant, the creditor claimant, who is asserting the claim, as well as the description of the claim itself with additional documentation 
And then on the back side of this form is a proof of service to allow you to certify that you have afforded the personal representative with notice. You also can file this with the probate court itself, and we do recommend that you do that so it becomes a docketed entry within the probate file. Now, once a personal representative is served with a claim, they can, as we said earlier, allow the claim or disallow the claim. With an allowance of a claim, they don't really have to take any steps. But with a disallowance of claim, they have to complete this scale form, which is identified here. This notice of disallowance of claim gives notice to the creditor that the clock is beginning in their steps that they have to take before they lose or are barred with their claim. And if they appropriately uh, handle the disallowance correctly, they can continue to perfect their creditor claim against the estate. Within that, you're gonna identify as personal representative the estate name and then the creditor name, and then further whether you're allowing or disallowing the claim in whole or in part. So for example, sometimes creditor proof of claims have many different items, and this particular form allows you to identify which part of the claim you object to and which part you are, you are allowing. Now, a personal representative can disallow a claim and then allow it, and also can allow a claim and then disallow it. So the burden is really on the creditor and the clock is on the creditor to perfect their claim within the statutory uh, timeframes, what we call the statute of limitations. So again, adherence to Michigan's court rule and statute is really critical to the creditor claim. Now what's important about this is that after the personal representative has disallowed a creditor claim, the um, the creditor has a time frame which is 63 days after the mailing of this particular form. So on the proof of service that's completed by the personal representative, if a lawsuit is not filed within 63 days in the appropriate district, circuit, federal, or probate court, the claim may be barred forever. So adherence, again, to the rule is really critical. And it's not done by petition. It's done by a civil action, a lawsuit that's filed against the estate demanding that your uh, claim be allowed. Otherwise, you're time barred and the claim is no longer needed to be paid by the estate. Now, under Michigan statute, there is a prioritization of how the assets of the estate get paid. We call that the priority of claim. And uh, under Michigan statute 700.3805, it identifies based on the amount of assets, who is going to get paid based on whether you are a creditor or whether you are an heir or an administrative expense. So if you carefully review that statute, it can tell you uh, whether that creditor claim, even if allowed, is ever going to get paid by the probate estate. Again, uh, this is a sampling, a brief explanation of the creditor uh, statute and the forms, a part of Michigan's creditor um, provisions. But to really understand it, you have to go deeper into Michigan's statute as well as the court rules. And we're happy to guide you through this or to provide legal representation. Give us a call at 877-YOUR-FIRM or visit us at theprobatepro.com.